Welcome everybody back to Monday Night Raw. We are at the go home show for Elimination Chamber. We are six days away. And we still don't know the sixth man in that chamber match. No, we do not. But right now we have Elias making the ring. another appearance on Monday Night Raw. We might as well just call this guy Monday Night Raw. He's, I'm pretty sure he's been on almost every show. Rightfully so. The man, the so. man deserves it. We're all going to walk with Elias tonight because he's finally getting his wish. This is a chance to become the number one contender and go up against Bobby Roode at the Elimination Chamber for the Intercontinental title. But his opponent tonight, of course, beat AJ Styles a few weeks back. The Velveteen Dream. He's got his, he's got his work cut out for him, but we all have faith in Elias here. Because he's the man, the myth, and the legend. And not the dream. Sure. You're looking at me like I, I got something to say here, like I got something to add here, but I got nothing, so you're on your own here. Nah, I'm just going off on a tangent anyway, so it's completely fine. Anyway, we're getting ready to kick off this show tonight. We are launching Monday Night Raw with style. But only two matches tonight as our main event is quite the big one. It's quite the doozy. We're going to have all six competitors in the Elimination Chamber in action tonight. So what you're saying here is by the end of the night, we will know who the sixth mystery man is. We should. We don't know, but... We'll find out, I guess. He'll be in that match. At least, as far as I know. As far as you know. Well, we'll have to wait and see, but right now, we should not be diverting our attention from the Velveteen Dream. D-R-E-A-M. Let's go. Hopefully, a great match for these two, as two very deserving individuals. Of course, Bobby Roode should be keeping a close eye on this match. Just uh, facing either one of these men is, is going to be a, a big challenge. I'm sure he's standing backstage sideways looking at a TV while holding his belt on his shoulder and rubbing it methodically as he uh, keeps a close eye on his opponents or his potential opponent here tonight. That's creepy. But it is exactly what he does. I've seen him do it. It's it's disturbing. It's what everybody does. They always watch TV sideways backstage. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they think it gives them a better angle. But if anything, I if, if I'm watching something, I'm looking straight on. Yeah, I, I never understood that. Just being back there, I, I like I like to just kind of look around the corner sometimes and you just see people being real weird. Oh, so it's almost it's like creepy. they're looking at the doorway, watching you, but they're staring at the TV. I don't understand it, Astra. I don't know what these wrestlers are doing here, but we're not wrestlers, so we don't know. Velveteen kind of being all strange and alluring in the middle of the ring here. Oh, boy, is he alluring. I'm coming <laughs> for you, Velveteen. You just give me the word, baby. He just called you over, I think. Oh. Now I'm intimidated. <laughs> I don't work well under pressure, Velveteen. Uh, me neither. But that's it. We're getting ready to start off this match, and it's going to be huge. Both these men very much deserving their chance. Elias with the unfortunate loss to Roderick Strong last week, but that was simply because of a disqualification. That's now missing a kick from Velveteen, but managing to connect on the second one here as we get straight into this match. But like I was saying, Velveteen also getting that victory over AJ Styles. So both these men got something to prove here. That it is now. Elias has been a mainstay of Monday Night Raw since the very start of our new management here. So it's nice to see him finally get another opportunity at something that should almost rightfully be his. I, I agree. He's made more appearances on Monday Night Raw than Bobby Roode ever has. He's, as you said earlier, he's probably made more appearances on Monday Night Raw than anybody. I feel like maybe Sheamus or HBK are up there with him, but Elias has been around. A long time putting in the work time and time again it's, he's only really only had one opportunity absolutely now you say Sheamus however we haven't seen Sheamus since the rumble I, I don't believe we've laid an eye on on Sheamus here either backstage or in the ring so uh, I'm hoping everything is okay with him he may be away uh, on, a, on a slight injury or something but uh, I'm hoping he'll be all right and we'll see him again very soon but in the meantime 
A big flurry of strikes here from Velveteen and Elias reversing now with a big forearm to the back. A big sur suplex here as well. Almost called surplus. I don't know why I said that. Well, a surplus of damage coming from that suplex. There you go. Yeah. Well, at least you got my back. Trying to. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult. <sighs> yeah. Right now we got <laughs> Velveteen and Elias still going at it inside the ring there. A little bit of a little bit of sloppy movement there, allowing Velveteen to get the upper hand here, draping Elias over the ropes. Not looking good for him. No, Velveteen seeming to struggle a little bit in this match. He's taken a little more than he's he's put out, but at the same time he's now hitting some vicious stomps to the back of Elias, keeping him on the mat here. Going for a beautiful gut wrench. One thing we do know, Velveteen sure does put out though. Oh boy. I mean, look at him. Of course he does. Don't give me that look. <laughs> Don't you judge me. Uh, it's okay. I'm not going to judge you too much. It's the Velveteen going for something here. Nope. Just running, bouncing off the ropes. Testing, testing the ropes. That's all he's doing. And now diving goes. over. And nope. waited a, a little bit too long there. Gave Elias the opportunity, the time to get up as he throws him to the outside. The referee is counting. So both these men... Taking it to the to, to ringside here, out into the crowd. This is very risky as both neither one of these men can afford being counted out here. That it is. The uh, security better be on top of their game here today, keeping the fans out of the danger here and keeping the wrestlers in line themselves as the referee is at, what, a count of six now? That is a count there of six. Is. Now Elias finally running back to the ring, but he's going up top. This could be risky. No, he, he's thought twice about it, though. And now countering Velveteen Dream. Trying to reach out and grab him. I think Velveteen is just a shade too far away. That he was, and he gets back in the ring there. Velveteen catches him with a vicious right... <laughs> I was about to say right leg, but a vicious right hand, and then gets a beautiful running leg drop on him. It's very uh, reminiscent of, of the Hulkster right there. The Hulkster, we got a Elias playing, playing possum here. Big roll up here. I'll kick out at two. And going for a knee, but Elias hitting the clothesline, so Velveteen didn't manage to connect with any of that. Picking him up now. Beautiful scoop slam from Elias. That clothesline there has really been almost like a signature move of Elias here. It's one of his go-to moves whenever he's in the ring here. Big spear to the outside. Back again on the... Uh, at ringside, sorry. Um, continuing this fight outside the ring, which is very strange for these two not to pay too much heed to the referee's count here. I will agree there as Velveteen's going for something here. I think he's going for a bit of a power bomb. Changed his mind. Yep, he's not doing anything here. He's just trying to throw Elias around here. He's doing a good job, though. He's doing a good job, just kind of throwing him around, but gave Elias enough time to work his way out. Kind of six here from the referee. This cannot be good, as now I believe Elias is about to hit the drift away on Velveteen Dream. Velveteen is surely out of it. That's a count of eight as Elias stands in the ring right next to the referee, taunting. It looks like Elias is going to get the count of victory here. Velveteen stirring at the last second, but no. It's a count of ten. And we've got Elias standing tall. In an <sighs> unfortunate, but decisive victory. A victory is a victory when it comes down to it. How he decides to win the match is all that matters. And in the end, Elias gets the W. And now he moves on to Elimination Chamber to face Bobby Roode. That is going to be an interesting match, and I'm excited to see how the two of them are going to work together. <sighs> but, unfortunately, like I said before, Velveteen got counted out. He wasn't paying attention to the, to, to the referee. Neither man paying attention to the referee. Well, I think Elias was paying attention. He knew exactly where he was. He's a little bit smarter than that, don't... Uh... Uh, sorry, I, I said both men. I meant... Just Velveteen. Don't situation. discredit Elias here. He's been around since Raw Week 1. He's going on, hopefully, to become champion. That Elimination is. Chamber. But now we got the main event of the evening, the aforementioned Battle Royale. All six members 
well, five plus mystery member of the Elimination Chamber as we see Andrade making his way to the ring first showing the championship off one more time this is three weeks now one loss one win and now an over-the-top rope battle royale <laughs> Let's see what Andrade is able to do here. So the stipulation is this is what, Astra? From what I understand on my piece of paper here, the order of elimination in this match is going to result in the order that you enter the elimination chamber. So if you're out first, you're starting in the ring at the elimination chamber. Okay. So Andrade needs to hope and pray that he is not the first eliminated tonight. That is fair, but he has a... We've seen a few of these opponents. It's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a doozy. We've got Andrade, of course, first up. Very, very strong competitor. Unfortunately, couldn't take the win over Bobby Roode, the Intercontinental Champion, back there on week five, I believe, of Monday Night Raw, just after the Royal Rumble. Um, right. Our general manager decided to do a champion versus champion contest in the main event, and unfortunately, it did not go Andrade's way. No, it did not. So Andrade still got a lot to prove here. I assume he's hoping to come out of the Elimination Chamber with that belt. It's going to take a lot. He's got to outlast six other men. Five other. Five other men. Sorry, he's, he's the sixth. My apologies. But he's got to he's got to survive five other men, and this man being one of them, the number one entrant of the Royal Rumble. I would even hesitate to call him a man. He is the monster among men. That's a very good point. He lasted until about halfway through the Royal Rumble, so that's about seven more people than what are going to be in this match right now, so it's, it's, I can only imagine that this man will go all the way. He could just pick someone up with his pinky and throw them over the top rope. I feel like you're throwing in a bunch of euphemi euphemisms. Euphemisms? Huh. I, that's yep. the word. You got it. <laughs> I feel like you're throwing a lot of them my way here right now, but I'm just uh, sort of awestruck here. A Braun Strowman, the absolute monster, the beast. He's a Paul Heyman beast. He was a Paul Heyman beast. No Paul Heyman tonight, but I'm sure Paul Heyman had something to do with this stipulation. Oh, most definitely here. Because if Braun can make his way to the end, of course he will be the last man in, the freshest man in the Elimination Chamber. But we're moving on to the smallest man in the Elimination Chamber. Ray Mysterio. I feel like Braun Strowman is just salivating in the ring, waiting for Ray Mysterio to get in there with him so he can just toss Slick him over the rope. That's absolutely the case. But Ray Mysterio, of course, clearing concussion protocol from that triple threat match with Jeff and Matt Hardy. Of course, he took a big hit to the outside, knocking him a little bit senseless. We all were worried for him, thought he had a concussion, but. He's cleared to wrestle, so we're seeing him tonight. He is still in the Elimination Chamber. That's why he hasn't been around for the past couple of weeks. Got to be a little bit cautious here now with uh, that close call with the concussion. Got to worry. I'm hoping that nothing happens to him here in this match here to hinder his chances at winning the WWE Undisputed Championship. Can you imagine how big of a night it would be for Rey Mysterio to walk out of there with the biggest championship on the brand being the smallest guy? It'd be huge. It would be huge. But one man that I think wants it just a little bit more. He's already is, had a chance. Yeah, he has. But I'm sure Adam Cole would like to bring the Undisputed Championship back to the Undisputed Era. I think he would as well. And then maybe lighting a fire under his his partners as well to maybe try and get some championship gold of their own. Maybe, maybe. I mean, we'll have to wait and see because we already know that Raw does not have a team to fight for the WWE Tag Team Championships at the Elimination Chamber. They have decided to opt out or opt out sword. I believe the general manager may be focusing a little more on the singles competitors for the time being. It's unfortunate we have such a great tag team division uh, over over here on Raw, but SmackDown just seems to have that many more. Do you though? I don't think we do actually. I'm just saying that so we can keep the, the spirits high. You know, can't let them know. I think they know. <laughs> of course they know. They haven't seen a tag team match on Raw since before the Royal Rumble. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's rough. I think the general manager of Ronnie's kind of get his head out of his own uh, behind there. 
I think so as well. He's focusing a little too hard on the wrong areas, but that's it. We move forward as now we have Shawn Michaels making his way, of course, earning his spot last week by getting a disqualification win over Jinder Mahal. Yeah, that was a weird one there, Astra. Yeah, Jinder taking the low blow the easy way out, unfortunately not securing a victory. I don't think he understands what disqualifications do. But it's not a loss. It's also not a win. Yeah, it just doesn't benefit you in any way. It really does not, unless you have a championship. In which case, it becomes a little more viable. Finger this quotes. is true. This is true. Well, we got HBK, multiple opportunities for him as well at the Undisputed Championship, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is his second chance as well. Both Adam Cole and Shawn Michaels were both in that fatal four-way, which Andrade won back at the Royal Rumble. Here we go. So Shawn Michaels here. It's almost make or break, because if he loses this opportunity again... I don't think he'll get another one. Why would he? He shouldn't. Next thing you know, we'll see Christian in here running around like a lunatic. Don't even joke about that. I mean, we don't know. There's there's one more man that needs to come out here tonight. And we're seeing shades of last week as that's Jinder Mahal's music. What? How and why? This man lost via disqualification. Why is he in this match? And due to association, because he is in this match, that means that he is apparently in the Elimination Chamber match. Oh, this, is only, this can only mean one thing, and that he's buying his way into the championship picture. You really think that supplement, that supplement cash is really that high? That much? That he's able to just... It, it's hard to say, but I mean, he, he clearly got disqualified last week against did, Shawn Michaels. But as the back of his shirt says, you can't hinder him. Maybe he's just work, he's just coming out here all on his own. Maybe he's just saying, no, nah, General Man, this is my job. Who knows? Either way, we have the modern day Maharaja in the ring right now, going towards the Elimination Chamber. Representing Colossal Supplements. We can only hope that he doesn't win. That's uh, awful rude of you there, Astra. I mean, this man has earned his, has, has lost his opportunity twice by low blowing Andrade and low blowing HBK and now he's in this match already. I don't know if this is a good sign for what's in store for our general manager going forward is Adam Cole going to eliminate Jinder but nope. Jinder just bridges the ropes and Adam Cole is over the top rope baby. That was a very very quick elimination right there as we now have HBK getting thrown out over so right off the bat Adam Cole and HBK will start off the elimination chamber inside the ring. They most certainly will, as Jinder immediately rushing to eliminate Shawn Michaels, in case you didn't notice that, to secure his spot in a pod, as now both the starting men have been determined as it's going to be Shawn Michaels and Adam Cole that starting the elimination chamber. We missed that in this corner there after knocking out Mysterio. Jinder and Braun just sort of stood around there as Andrade was taunting up on the top ropes and immediately they turned their attention and rushed towards the corner. Beautiful as Jinder trying to eliminate Braun early a beautiful clothesline but Braun managing to grab the rope and just managed to land on the apron there at the last second. That would have been a huge upset here as Just like champion. that one the champion just got thrown over the rope. I'm so sorry to cut you off but that Don't caught worry me about off it. guard. As Jinder, again, doing the same thing he did to Adam Cole, baiting him in for a clothesline and then just bridging the rope. Jinder has been very dominant here so far, eliminating Adam Cole, HBK. No, sorry, did Braun Strowman eliminate Adam Cole? They both did. Uh, no, uh, sorry, Jinder eliminated Adam Cole, but they both, Braun and Jinder, eliminated Shawn Michaels. And then Jinder eliminating Andrade. So far he's had a hand in every single elimination. There's a very good chance that he's going over the top rope here, though, as Rey Mysterio has him put against the ropes. He's going for something. Nope, just an elbow to the back. This is a very scary time now for either three of these men. Of course, all three of them securing a pod spot. It's just a matter of what order they now enter the match. That it is. So the champion will be entering third here. 
which isn't ideal because, well, he'll be entering first into the match after. Apologies, a little bit, uh, a little bit kerfuffled with the words there, but Rey Mysterio is stuck on the outside as Braun Strowman is just working him, but Jinder is just watching, Take, waiting. Taking full advantage of this, of, of this opportunity as he knows you know, these two these two men can focus on each other and he can just sit back and take advantage when the time comes. But Rey Mysterio working his way out of that elimination. And now Jinder turning his attention to Braun Strowman, which by all means he should be. Rey Mysterio seems to be caught up on the ropes here. That is. Probably isn't going to bode well for him there. He sees his arms getting strung up here. Hopefully he's going to get himself out of it. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> the ropes snap back into place as now he's going for an elimination. No. Looks like he's just going for a 619. Braun Strowman just watching on. He knows that he can probably get in here and pick up something here. It's a beautiful dropkick from Braun Strowman, knocking Rey Mysterio to his feet and hopefully going to just throw him over those top ropes. But there's a lot happening with ropes here right now. They're all tangled up in the ropes, maybe saving Rey Mysterio here. It looks like he managed to wrap his hand around the rope just enough. And Jinder Mahal just tried to go for a low blow on Braun Strowman. Very, very reminiscent of... Last week, of course, <laughs> eliminating himself, su supposedly, from this match. Yep. And uh, Rey Mysterio going for the five-star frog splash, of course. Braun Strowman getting those knees up. That he is. So now he throws Rey Mysterio on the outside there and knocks his fingers off, leaving Jinder Mahal and Braun Strowman as the final two. This is huge. As both of these men are both trying to get the, the most opportunistic spot in the elimination chamber of course that being number six last one in has the most likely to win because everyone else is gassed you're fresh now jinder trying his hardest to eliminate Braun, but he just cannot seem to lift him he's having nope. a hard time here well you see maybe if he had more of those supplements there maybe he would have had more luck i don't know if he can have more supplements as now we see Braun with a big fist to the face now picking him up for a choke slam and throwing Jinder Mahal to the outside like it's nothing. Securing his position as the last participant to enter into the Elimination Chamber. This is going to be quite the match. We've got Adam Cole and HBK kicking it off. Followed by Andrade. Then Rey Mysterio, Jinder Mahal, and Braun Strowman out last. Of course, that gives Braun Strowman the best odds to win. Which he already had. Because, I mean, look at him. Doesn't bode well for the rest of the competitors. It most certainly does not. But thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys tomorrow night on SmackDown.